Trinidad and Tobago to witness a protest with a difference. And in sport, West Indies make inroads on the opening day of the second test against England. I'm Nicole Best, and this is the Caribbean in 10 for Friday, August 25th. I'll be back with the details after the break. How do you see this going forward? In so many things, and the diaspora is no exception. We do, do suffer somewhat from a implementation deficit. And uh, I think there is now a full-fledged department dealing with that. I wanted to find out what exactly it was and why it poses such a threat to democracy. While traveling around the countryside, I saw that one thing is clear. There's a high degree of excitement and participation in the Constituent Assembly from Venezuelan society. I went to the rural agricultural town of Cojedes in the northern region of the country, hours from the city center, where hundreds of poor and working class community Venezuelans were converging to discuss the process. Welcome back. Tobago House of Assembly Minority Leader Watson Jew plans to stage a protest with a difference next Monday. He and members of his party will swim from the Scarborough Fishing Facility in Tobago to the mainland to protest the unreliable inter-island ferry service, as well as deficiencies in the procurement process for governments over, that's Ocean Flower 2 cargo vessel. We get more from CNC3's Kamal Georges. He made the threat several weeks ago, but Watson Duke appears to be serious about swimming the 30 kilometers between the islands. We will commence by swimming from this port towards Tuku. We are not sure exactly where we will reach insofar as Tuku, San Susi, Port of Spain. Wherever we reach, we know it will be the north coast. By whatever means is necessary, we will take that means, but we will commence by swimming. And we are doing this understanding the peril of the understanding that the water is mixed and the currents are heavy that there are different types of fish out there True. that could be dangerous understanding that it may be the very last time we come back on this side but duke and members of his people's democratic party assure that they will be taking the necessary precautions including life jackets and medical personnel at least 35 children have been murdered in jamaica so far this year the Jamaica Constabulary Force says that for the period January 1st to August 12th, the island recorded 929 murders. In that time, 35 children were killed, which is 11 more for the same period than last year. The highest number of child murders in any one parish was in St. James, on the northwest end of the island, where eight killings were recorded. Police records also show that 13 children were killed in road accidents up to August 12, down from the 17 recorded in 2016. Last year, Jamaica recorded a total of 1,350 murders, with the police saying that 65% of those were linked to gangs. Plans are being made to use high-tech instruments in all of Guyana's prisons to stop the smuggling of contraband. Since the unrest at the prison in the capital in July, the demand for contraband has reportedly increased. Javon Vickery of HGP Nightly News tells us more. Authorities have reportedly seized approximately 3,000 grams of cannabis and other illegal items between July and August 2017 at the prisons. Director of Prisons Gladwin Samuels, while acknowledging the trend, had said that the demand for contraband in Camp Street, Luziknan and Tamiri prisons has increased. Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramchatan was asked by Nightly News about long-term plans to curb the practice of contraband smuggling in the prison system. The other way is to get some very heavy X-ray equipment coming in, and we are going to try to bring that in too. That will help modern technologies and so on. Recently, the Public Security Ministry initiated a plan to have all prison wardens and prisoners checked by members of the Guyana Police Force on entry and departure from all prisons. 
But the Public Security Minister reiterated that there is an underlying problem to the issue of contraband smuggling in the prison system. It obviously is um, collusion of family members that are because they're on self-support and we got to do a lot more to catch these fellas but it is very disappointing. Cayman Islands Premier Alden McLaughlin has dismissed calls for government-owned housing for the nation's poor. In the first sitting of the 2017-2018 Legislative Assembly on Wednesday, he blasted social services programs as being inefficient. He said more than sufficient housing stock already exists. And McLaughlin says his government will not set up housing in competition with landlords. Whilst I appreciate the concern and desire for government to construct or purchase housing to be used for temporary accommodations by social services, the fact is that that approach is not only practical and cannot be afforded in this budget, but is also unnecessary. Premier McLaughlin says what his administration will do is address the effectiveness of the needs assessment unit and improve the timeliness of that unit's rent payments to address long-standing landlord complaints. Stay with us. Your midday sport is next. Excuse me, they said, I hear something about that comedy show. Why, 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 really? It's all about Carrie Festa 2017. People, it's the Caribbean Comedy Explosion, Saturday, August 26th at the Sir Garfield Sober Gymnasium. ITM Fancy Cat from Jamaica. The legendary Larry Joseph from Trinidad and Tobago. And he's bringing along the new funny man, Kenneth Chaney Super Sad. With the Lord Alexander, the Drunken Saint, and Darren Mendoza. And the daddy of all comedy daddies, Errol Fabian. And Kayana got to be there, people. They're bringing Jumbi and Odessa Primus. That's right. And bringing it home is Trevor Dynamite Eastman, Laugh It All, Roman Cole, Queen Archibald Cox, and special guest Stiffy. General admission $65. And the IMF will be there. IMF Fingal is your MC. MC is mad and crazy. <laughs> the Caribbean Comedy Explosion, Saturday, August 26th, the Garfield Stober Gymnasium. People, get your tickets from official box offices only. West Indies bowlers continued to make inroads in England's batting at T despite a half century by informed captain Joe Root on the opening day of the second test at Headingley today. Speeds to Shannon Gabriel and Kimar Roach both grabbed a, a brace of wickets as England stumbled to the second interval on 156 for 6. Root made 59 while the left handed Ben Strokes was unbeaten on 45. Resuming from lunch on 61 for 3, England lost David, that's David. Malan in the third over after the left-hander had just added five bold playing on to captain and pacer Jason Holder at 71 for four. But Root and Stokes then combined in a 69-run fifth wicket stand to repair the innings. The right-handed Root faced 98 balls and counted nine fours, while Stokes had so far also struck nine boundaries in a 59-ball innings. West Indies then struck two key blows towards the end of the session in the space of 21 balls when Root was caught at slip by Jermaine Blackwood, sweeping at leg spinner Devendra Bishu, and Johnny Barristow edged a drive at Gabriel and was taken at second slip by Holder for two. And that's the Caribbean in 10. Join us at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Do have yourselves a good afternoon. <laughs>